Welcome friends uh, to this session on transistor amplifier. In this session, we'll be discussing about the transistor biasing. In this session, we will understand what we mean by biasing a transistor. We will understand what is the DC load line of the transistor and what is the concept of Q point of the transistor. As you know that you are viewing this session on my YouTube channel, Learn with Prakash Khanal, and please subscribe to the YouTube channel to view many more videos on the subjects of electronics and computer science. We know that a transistor is a device which has three terminals. The first terminal is being called as a base of the transistor. Another terminal is being called as the emitter of the transistor. And the third terminal is being called as the collector of the transistor. Transistor, you will find that it is an active electronic device. In electronics, some of the devices are passive devices, such as resistor, capacitor. And some of the devices are active devices. So transistor is an active device. And whenever we have some active device, then such active device will need proper DC voltages in order to get it work. So whenever you want to operate a transistor, then you need to apply proper base voltage, proper collector voltage and proper emitter DC voltage. When you are providing appropriate voltages to the base terminal, emitter terminal and collector terminal of the transistor, so that the transistor will work properly, then it is being called as a biasing of the transistor. So whenever you are using transistor in any electronic circuit, it is necessary that you should provide appropriate voltages to all the three terminals of the transistor. And this process of providing appropriate DC voltages to the terminals of the transistor is being called as a biasing of the transistor. We know that the transistor can be used by two ways. The first one is that you can use it as an amplifier. And the another way is that you can use it as a switch. When you want to use this transistor as an amplifier, then its base emitter junction must be forward biased. That this junction, base and emitter junction must be forward biased. And the base collector junction, that is this junction of the transistor must be reverse biased. If you want to use transistor as a switch, then you will find that either both the junctions are forward biased or both the junctions are reverse biased. Now, when we make one junction of the transistor forward biased and another junction of the transistor reverse biased, then we say that the transistor is an active region. And it is essential that we should use the transistor in active region whenever we want to use it as an amplifier. Now you will find that uh, biasing circuits are those circuits with the help of which we can provide appropriate voltages to the transistor so that the transistor can get biased. You will find that there are different biasing circuits available. Say for example, we have emitter feedback bias, we have collector feedback bias, we have voltage divider bias. So there are different forms or we have uh, some simple base bias circuit. So there are different forms of biasing circuits. But uh, before we actually go for the different biasing circuit, it is very necessary for us to understand, first of all, what we mean by the DC load line of the transistor and the concept of Q point of the transistor. So in this session, we will understand the DC load line and the Q point of the transistor. And maybe in later session, we will understand the different biasing circuits and their working. So let us consider a transistor. Suppose I have a NPN transistor and I have connected uh, two batteries. One small battery VBB is being connected between base and emitter. And it is being connected through the resistance RB. Another battery VCC is being connected between collector and emitter. So emitter is a common terminal and therefore such configuration of the transistor is being called as a common emitter configuration. A battery VCC is connected through the resistance RC 
and current flowing through this resistance is IC and current flowing through the base terminal of the transistor is ID. Collector to emitter voltage of the transistor is called as VC and base to emitter voltage of the transistor can be called as VB. Observe that we have connected only DC voltages to this transistor and there is no signal present that is no AC voltage is being applied to the transistor. Now when we study the characteristics of such transistor you will find that we can plot the characteristics as shown in the figure. Now in steps you can go on increasing the VC that is collector to emitter voltage of the transistor and you can record IC that is collector current of the transistor and you can keep the IB fix that is the base current of the transistor is kept fixed. Now when we take the different values of IB then you will find that these are the characteristics. So initially when VC is zero IC is also zero. When VC goes on increasing IC increases and after certain value you will find that the IC will be almost flat even if we increase VC. Now these are the curves and these are the curves that are being called as a characteristic curves. Now let us understand these characteristic curves. You will find that this region of the characteristic curve when IB is equal to zero, this region of the characteristic curve is being called as the cutoff region of the transistor. This region of the characteristic curve when IC is maximum, it is being called as a saturation region of the transistor. Observe that when the transistor is in cutoff region, then both the junctions base emitter and base collector junction of the transistor are reverse biased. And when the transistor is in saturation region, then both the junctions that is base emitter and base collector junction of the transistor are forward biased. So when both the junctions are forward biased, the transistor works as a saturation in saturation region. And when both the junctions are reverse biased, then the transistor works in the cutoff region. But when we want to use the transistor as an amplifier, then our point of interest is that we want to operate the transistor in active region. So this region, you will find that of the characteristic curve is being called as a active region of the transistor. And in this active region, you will find that the one junction of the transistor is forward biased and the another junction of the transistor is reverse biased. Now I will find uh, the saturation point on this characteristic curve. So this is the saturation point. It is being called as the maximum value of IC. So maximum value of IC or IC saturation can be given by VCC divided by RC. And the uh, cutoff point on this characteristic curve can be found when IC is equal to zero. That is when VC is equal to VCC. So you will find that for the cutoff point, the current collector current is zero. And for the saturation point, the collector to emitter voltage VC is equal to zero. So this point on this curve is being called as the cutoff point and this point on this curve is being called as the saturation point. So now uh, we can define the DC load line. You will find that the DC load line is a kind of a straight line which joins the cutoff point and saturation point on the transistor characteristic curve. So as I said, this is our cutoff point for which IC is equal to zero. And this is our saturation point for which VC is equal to zero. And when we join this point, say point A and point B, then we will get a straight line. And this straight line is being called as a DC load line. Now we can write it in the form of equation VCC, that is uh, supply voltage VCC is equal to ICRC plus VC for the cutoff point IC is equal to zero and therefore we will get VC is equal to VCC and for the saturation point VCE is equal to zero and therefore we will get the maximum value of collector current IC is equal to VCC divided by RC. So this is our saturation point and this is our cutoff point and when we join these two points together by a straight line then this line on the characteristic curve is being called as a DC load line. So DC load line, you can say it is a kind of a graph and this graph will represent all the possible combinations of IC and VC. So whatever uh, 
are the possible values of collector current and collector to emitter voltage for the given transistor are being plotted on a line and this line is being called as a DC load line. You will find that in case of amplifier or in case of transistor amplifier, the DC load line is very important because you will find that uh, regardless of the behavior of the transistor, the collector current IC and the collector to emitter voltage VCE will always lie on the DC load line. So there will be no any other value, possible value for IC and VCE. All the values will be there on the load line and this line is being called as the DC load line. Now let us understand uh, the concept of Q point of the transistor. Q point of the transistor is being called as an operating point of the transistor. Many times you will find that this point is called as the quiescent point. So this later Q comes from this word quiescent. Quiescent that will stand for when no AC signal is applied or when no input AC is applied to the transistor, then that is being called as a quiescent. So when no signal is applied, then it is being called as a quiescent condition of the transistor. The quiescent point of the transistor or Q point of the transistor can be obtained as shown in this diagram. Say for example, I have a VC plotted on the X axis and collector current IC plotted on the Y axis. And now we know can say that this is our DC load line. This is our saturation point and this is our cutoff point. So when we join the saturation point and cutoff point, then this is our DC load line. The intersection of this DC bias values of IB with the DC load line is being called as a Q point of the transistor. Now suppose I have IB somewhat like this and when I plot this curve IB uh, for this IB, the transistor characteristic curve for this IB, then you will find that this IB uh, curve will get intersected the DC load line at a point and this point is being called as the Q point of the transistor. Now the Q point of the transistor, it is always better to have the Q point of the transistor at the center of the DC load line. So this Q point must be at the center of this DC load line. It should not be very much on the lower side closer to the B or it should not be on very much higher side closer to the A because it will create problem when we use the transistor as an amplifier. When we want to use the transistor as an amplifier, then this Q point, if it is at the center of the load line, then this is being called as the midpoint biasing. And because of the midpoint biasing, we will find that the optimum AC operation of the amplifier can be achieved. Because when we apply AC input to the amplifier, then you will find that this Q point will vibrate on this DC load line. It will go in the upward direction when the positive input is applied and it will go in the downward direction when negative input is applied. And we want to ensure that the transistor should always remain in active region. Therefore, this Q point is always desirable to have at the center of the load line. Now let us see uh, what will happen when we change the position of the Q point. Now suppose this is our Q point and it is slightly on upper side. That is it is closer to the saturation point. Then you will find that when the input signal is applied, then this ICQ will go into the saturation. And when it goes into the saturation, you will find that uh, this IC portion, uh, the collector uh, curve portion will be clipped off. And because of this, you will find that the output voltage will also be clipped off. So this portion of the output voltage will get clipped off when the uh, Q point of the transistor is closer to the saturation value. That is in this case, you will find that the distortions are produced. Q point is very important because it will decide the shape of the output waveform. When the Q point is at the center, then probably we will get a complete sinusoidal output when AC input is applied. But when the Q point is at the uh, closer to the saturation, then you will find that there will be 
clipping in the waveform that we will not get a complete sinusoidal output. Now suppose the Q point is now towards the downward side and it is closer to the cutoff point. If it is closer to the cutoff point, then you will find that this portion of the collector current will get clipped off and it will cause the clipping in the output voltage during the positive half cycle. So again, you will find that there will be distortions introduced in the output waveforms when the Q point is not at the center of the load line. And now as shown in this diagram, if I plot this Q point, now you will find that the position of the Q point can be set by using the biasing circuit. That is the biasing circuits are responsible for initial position of the Q point. Now we can adjust this biasing circuit in such a way that the, we can set the Q point of the transistor at the center of the DC load line. And when it is at the center of the DC load line, then you will find that you will get a non-distorted output. That is, there will not be clipping either on the negative half cycle or there will not be clipping on the positive half cycle. That is when the input AC signal is applied, we will get a complete sinusoidal AC output. So thank you friends for viewing this session. Uh, in the next session, uh, we will be discussing about the biasing circuits, the different types of biasing circuits. And we will see how by using this biasing circuit, we can set the Q point of the transistor at the center of the DC load line. Thank you for viewing the session. Thanks all.